And as we move into this place of stillness and quiet, we just allow our minds to release all that we came in with, all that doesn't serve us. And look down a new path. Today we look down a path of abundance. Imagine on each side of the path is a myriad of acorns. And in your mind's eye, see them working their way into the ground. And with the warmth of the sun, the patterns of rain, They begin to sprout. And imagine you are witnessing the growth, the abundance of Mother Nature at her best as these giant oaks become a forest protecting and serving our world. And you move on down the path. And you cut open an apple. The beauty of the apple nourishes your body. But you see all these little seeds. And in your mind's eye, they're planted. And once again, Mother Nature at her best gives us a whole orchard of apple trees. And on the other side of that path, There's somebody selling bushels of peaches. And as you bite into this delicious blessing from Mother Nature, think about all of the pits in those peaches. And allow your mind to envision this whole beautiful orchard of abundance. Peach trees, apple trees, almonds, grapes, each thing that God has created for you is a blessing. Because within each thing and within each of us, there is a seed of growth, of abundance, a blessing. No 
matter how far you walk down this path and whatever tree, orchard, fruit, vegetable, plant, each thing has the potential to bring abundance into the world. As you gaze up into the light, the sun, through the shade that is being given to you by the forest, you say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mother Nature. Thank you to the earth. Thank you for the abundance. And as you slowly journey back down the path, you are in awe of that which has been given. you slowly and very gently move back to this space and time bring with you gratitude blessings and love Yesterday, as we move on with our bees, our month of the, the wonderful honeybee, uh, this came across my desk from uh, Reverend uh, April, who's going to be here for Father's Day. And it's from a Christian minister talking about the spirituality of bees. I find that very interesting because, I'll read to you what she said in a minute, but I find it interesting because at the last luncheon that I went to for the interfaith, all of our churches within uh, our community of Sheboygan, I mentioned the book and spoke, of course, with my enthusiasm because you know that I'm all enthusiastic about the, the book. And one of the ministers said, is there scripture in it? And I said, no, but there's God and love and spirituality and interrelations and co-creating and all of the things that are within this book. And that particular minister kind of dismissed and went like, oh. So here is a Christian minister from uh, uh, Orlando, and it's the Christ Community Church. And she said, when I read the book, that it touched my heart and soul. Now, you know that that's what happened to me. I feel compelled to share it with you. The most recent of such book, Song of Increase by Jacqueline Freeman. Each time I pick it up, I feel a connection to God, myself, and all that is. The spiritual lessons come through the author as she is listening to the voice and the spirit of the honeybees. So it just delighted me to see this because I've been seeing little clips here and there on the, the different uh, sites that I'm on about this book. Uh, she is not doing actually Sunday talks. She is doing a series on Wednesday night with the bees. She's doing something a little bit different. But I found that uh, really exciting. One of the things that um, I, I did this week, I haven't gotten an answer back yet, so keep this in uh, planting seeds, keep this in your planting seed uh, of ground, is that I sent an email to uh, Jacqueline Freeman asking her about coming here and doing a 
workshop and a Sunday service and inviting all of the communities around. So it's a possibility and we'll see what happens with that. But I think that would be just exciting. So I just wanted to share that with you because you know how I get when I'm excited about things. <laughs> Can't help myself. Okay, so, so the first thing that people think about when they hear the word abundance is what? Exactly, and that's not what we're here to talk about today in any way, shape, or form. So from our class on the art of abundance, Dr. Dennis gives us a good description then between the word prosperity and abundance. And what he says is abundance is a universal principle and it's unlimited potential. Principle, unlimited potential. It is the unseen essence of more than enough. And that's what abundance is about. It's about more than enough. And when you were visualizing and, and thinking today about every, just think about the plants that are in your house. If you just started cutting them and putting them in water, how many plants could you grow from that? Your house would be overrun, correct? For those of you that are gardeners in here. So. So here's what uh, I know. Then prosperity then, so that's abundance. Prosperity then is the seen outward demonstration of that which we've conceived. So it's like we have an idea of what we want and we put whatever into motion for it to come and then the prosperity is our manifestation. But abundance isn't about things. Abundance is about that which is within us. Abundance of heart, abundance of soul, abundance of giving, abundance of receiving. It's a different thing than prosperity. So uh, Rumi, the poet Rumi puts it this way. The source is within us. So the source is what? God, absolutely. The source, your creator, whatever you choose to call that which is within you. So the source is within you, and this whole world is springing up from it. So everything within God then is springing up from, from within to without. The source is full. God is full. There is no limit. It is unlimited. And its waters are ever flowing. But it says, do not grieve. Drink your fill. Don't think it will ever run dry, this endless ocean of infinite potential. It doesn't go dry. So Rumi is telling us that the source within us, then it will always be there. And Charles Fillmore says it a little bit different. He says you must first enter into the understanding that God, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, is the source, and that you can draw from it. You can draw without limit. Rumi, how many years ago? And Charles Fillmore, and what are they saying? They're saying the exact same thing. And I know when I remember, which like the rest of you, sometimes I forget, but when I remember to affirm that the divine mind is my only source and supply, abundance in all things flows to me. And along with this, though, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude is so important. See, we don't say thank you after the fact. We say thank you before knowing it is done because it is always done in mind. So this is a ferment of prayer, right? God is, I am, I declare right here and right now that this is my truth. You say thank you, and then you release and let go, right? That's a ferment of prayer. So what you need to know is then if you immediately say, and you're going to hear me say this and forever I'm here until I'm 90 and I fall off the thing and die. So you're going to, you're going to hear me say that if you do a prayer and then say, God, I hope that works, you nullify the prayer. It's done. You have to know God is, I am, I make this declaration, I say thank you, I release it, I let it go. And when you do that, you know it is done. That is affirmative prayer. So you have to let go of the fear that it might not work or the fear about whatever your situation might be. Okay, so when you are grateful, then fear disappears and abundance appears because that's the law. It has to. That's the way it works. See, true prayer does not reach out to God out there in some distant universe. You simply must get still and realize your unity with the whole. Does that make sense? You have to get still. 
true prayer does not reach out there to God. It's here within. You have to get still. Jesus taught us that God doesn't deal with the grace of poverty, but instead with the grace of abundance. Think about that, the grace of abundance. Just hearing that is like a reassuring sentence. It's like peaceful. See, there's no sin in poverty or lack of abundance, by the way, but you know what the sin is? And I'm using the word nebulously because we don't believe in sin. But do you know what it is? It's not knowing our divinity and owning our divine inheritance. We're born with all that is potential for us. So if we're not owning our divine inheritance and living an abundant life, then that's a mistake. Sin is a mistake, missing the mark. We know that. So what then is a true abundant life? An abundant life refers to the abounding fullness of joy and strength for mind, body, heart, and soul. That's an abundant life. There could be a billionaire that is the most miserable, unhappy person in the world, and there could be an average Joe like you and I that is the happiest person in the world because they have this fullness, the strength, the soul, joy. That's abundance. Those are the things that are abundance. So I'll say it again, abounding fullness of strength, joy for your body, mind, heart, and soul. See, notice it's not about having things. Not at all about having things. Abundance isn't something that we acquire. An abundant life signifies a contrast of feelings of lack, emptiness, and dissatisfaction. And such feelings may motivate us to seek the meaning of life, to change our life. When we're stuck in that dissatisfaction and that uncomfortableness, and we don't know where to go with our life, this is when we seek for the meaning to change our life. And that's easy to do, somewhat. But there is within us this legitimate royal abundance for every living soul. Royal abundance, divine inheritance. You know, when we start to think of that, for me, it makes me now taller. You know, do you see that? Taller. Okay, Rose said to me the other day, you're shrinking. I said, I am not, but taller, taller. So anyhow, royal abundance, divine heritage. These are things to hold on to. See, riches are not from abundance of wor worldly goods. They're from a contented mind. How content is your mind? I had, I had lunch with uh, the, the Carries yesterday, and they said, you look happy. You look contented. Are you happy? I said, yeah, I'm happy. You know, so it, it's, it's contented. That's the abundance. There's abundance in my life in spirit. And that will hold for everything else that comes. That is the foundation that you need. And being generous is a big part of abundance. And in my study of our new friends, the honeybees, I have learned so much about generosity in our world. And not only that, though, this is what's so amazing for you. Those of you that are reading the book and those of you that haven't, it's a must. It's a mandate, I'm just saying. So, but they pray in everything they do. The bees pray. Who ever knew this? It reminds me of how we live our lives so better by constantly being in affirmative prayer. But from the book, this is what Freeman writes. And this is just profound for me. She said, I was deeply moved to hear the bees say, sugar doesn't have a prayer in it. But when the bees process nectar into honey, the entire hive song goes into prayer and blesses their food and brings them and the world to true nutrition. I don't know about you, maybe it's just me, but to me that's profound. It's just profound that they pray they pray to bless their food and bring the world true nutrition. Can you think of any other species that sing songs of prayer for our food? I mean, there might be, but I don't know of any. And the generosity, the generosity in the bees making the abundance of the purest food and doing it in prayer and love. 
So, O oh, blessed honey, writes uh, Rodolf, uh, Rodolf Steiner, beekeeping advances civilization because it makes men strong. Nothing is better for mankind than to add a little honey in right measure to his food. He goes on to say that the bees, in a wonderful way, give man what he needs for the work of his soul. Work of his soul. And Emerson tells us this, is this, what you think is great is great. So I think all of this is great, but the soul's emphasis is always right. So when something within you is just telling you that this is right, this is truth, this is something that we need to take deep within ourselves and look at and say, whoa, this universe is magnificent. And by the way, of the beehive, the whole universe flows and makes a good, capable being out of humans. How? I sat with this yesterday, no, Friday rather, and stared out my window and said, how? How does this happen? Why does it happen? Well, let's ask the bees. Because this is the part in the book where it's in our own words. The bee is speaking to us. Honey contains a rising helix, which invigorates humankind through a spiritual force. Honey filled with spiritual forces kindle the heart of fellowship. Through this bond, humans develop respect and love of all beings. Again, it just... You know what? Here's what I know. No matter what the topic is, what book you read, how much of different religions you read, it comes back to core values, a consistent message, and a common denominator. And that is love. That's it. It's just love. So then I sat with it again. This was an interesting talk to do because it did a lot of uh, self-inquiry into myself. And I get, how do we not get this? How do we not understand this? If love is God and God is love and we believe that, how do we not get it? How do we not understand this? The bees say this, through respect, appreciation, and all actions based on honorable relations, you step into your own evolution. We are an evolution unto ourselves, the bees tell us. We emerge into the earth sphere as templates of harmony, unity, and, and community. Okay. I remembered an article, though, from the Science of Mind magazine that said, the moment humankind stood upright and became self-aware, any further evolution ceased, and all forward movement became his own responsibility, solely through the expansion of his consciousness. So at what point, then, I ask myself, and I ask you, at what point did we stop? What point did we stop evolving? What point did we get stuck or comfortable in complacency? When did we get there? In this place or time that we're in right now, have we gone backwards? Have we gone backwards and become unconscious? Respect, appreciation, honorable actions. This is not much to ask of ourselves. And yet, it appears to me it boils down to one thing and two words, love and integrity. Love and integrity. Isn't that something we should desire to acquire? Shouldn't that be the way of our lives? Is our collective unconsciousness ruling our lives and our world right now? And if it is, we need to step up and step out of it. And we need to do that now. Have we lost the ability to really love? I don't know. I don't know. The bees go on to say this, we bring the gift to you and ask you to absorb it into your being. 
with the awareness, generosity, and abundance with which we offer. In this, listen to what they say, in this, bees and humans become co-creative forces and light workers of the world in love. Co-creative forces, light workers in the world in love. That's what we are in here. We are the co-creative life forces. When I say at the end of service, let us go out and be beacons of light into the world. This is a lesson that's coming right from there. And we all know this. And we all feel it. And then something happens. So all day yesterday, I'm feeling love, just love. Nothing else matters, just love, just love. And then I thought, is there an answer to all this? Is there an answer? Realizing that God can do no more for you than he can do through you, right? God in me, as me, is me. We are living in of God. So how are you showing up as God? How are you showing up? How am I showing up? These are deep questions, and they're profound questions. But the answer is, God can do no more for you than he can do through you. Are you allowing all of this to come in? Are you? The miracle, the miracle of abundance works through your consciousness in accordance with your experience, your attitude of self-inquiry. That's the miracle. The miracle is being willing to go within and look and decipher what is your true perspective, what is your true belief system, and what is not the truth for you. And that's where the growth comes from. That's where the love comes from. And what I begin to is if you do just one decent thing after another, it's as simple as that to change the world. One act of random kindness towards yourself and another. You know, my prayer partner always asks me at the end of our weekly thing, what are you going to do today just for you? Because random act of kindness is also a random act of kindness for yourself. What are you going to do just for you today to make your day more meaningful, more beautiful? You know, last week I asked someone to go to lunch with me after service because it was Mother's Day and, uh, you know, yes, I had beautiful flowers for my daughter, but she's still in California and I didn't feel like going home. And the person said, oh, I can't. I have plans with my family. And I said, no problem. No, no problem. And about 20 minutes later downstairs, that person came back to me and she said, I changed my plans because I have family here and I can see them any day. You have no one on Mother's Day, so yes, I will go to lunch with you. That, my friends, is the definition of love, divine love, God's love. You know, and this isn't any easier for me than it is for you, but I think we get so hung up on, well, you know, I got to solve this, and I got to heal that, and I got to dig deep, and I got to do this. What if we just forgot it all for one day and said one decent thing after another. One decent thing after another. How about it? Just do it. Check in with yourself every hour if need be and ask the question, how am I doing today? How am I doing today? You know, I do that at night, and you guys know that. When I go to sleep, I go, okay, how did the day go? This went good, this went good, I, I shouldn't have said that, whatever. You can do all that stuff you do in your mind, monkey mind. But what if we checked in every hour and say, how am I doing? Am I decent to myself, to a coworker, to a friend, to Leanne in the office, to Jules in the office? Am I kind? Am I nice? Do I remember always to say thank you to them when I leave here every single day? One decent thing after another. Remember what the bees said. In this, bees and humans become co-creative forces and light workers in the world and in love. Wow. In the art of abundance, um, they have rules. There's seven, ten rules to the art of abundance, and the seventh rule is be blessed. And there's a difference between counting your blessings and knowing you are blessed. And knowing you are blessed originates in your heart with simple awareness. 
and you're blessed with this gift of life. And you know that Butterworth tells us to bless is to confer prosperity on, um, upon. And how does this then relate? It invites us to witness the many different ways principal abundance operates in our life. It's a blessing. The purpose to bring holiness or wholeness to your world, that's all, just a blessing. Dr. Holmes from uh, Religious Science always started his Sunday celebration with, there is a power for good in the universe and you can use it. And that's how he started every Sunday service. But he's right, because through our wholeness, our generosity, our willing to bless, we are using this power. We are using this power for good. And it is available. And it's a power only we can initiate. So to be blessed, to know you are blessed, you will become an authentic being to others. And this is why you're here, to bless, to love, be your authentic self. To be blessed and to know you're a blessed is to affirm you're a whole person. Whole means holy. Holy means whole. You are a whole person. There's nothing missing. This is when you become a blessing to the world and opening for abundance. This then becomes the norm in your life. And Walt Whitman wrote this little poem that I love. I'm larger than I thought. I did not know I held such goodness. It all seems beautiful to me. Whoever denies me, it shall be no trouble. And whoever accepts me, he or shall be blessed. And I shall be blessed. And we are all blessed. And so ends the lesson. And so begins a very precious new moment right here, right now, in this very place. So it is. <laughs>